Welcome to the Monday Morning Memory Wipe. I'm your host, Craig Price, and it's time to comb through the clutter and identify what you need to know so you can delete the rest and start your week with a clean slate. Before we start, let me remind you to subscribe to the YouTube playlist at Stolen Droids, click the bell for notifications, and follow Memory Wipe on Twitter. Also, if you have something to say, contribute, or just to drop a happy note, we're morningmemorywipe at gmail.com. Now let's get to priority one. E3 wrapped up this week, and while the video game conference was held virtually this year for the first time, it didn't disappoint. The team behind Dos X revealed that they are working on Marvel's next big game, Guardians of the Galaxy. Players will become Star-Lord, aka Peter Quill, in a third-person action adventure, while the rest of the Guardians will be AI companions that will be by your side throughout the game. The story takes place several years after some kind of intergalactic war, when the Guardians are still a relatively fresh group, having been together for less than a year. Early gameplay footage shows a game filled with big shooter battles, overly neon magenta worlds, plenty of 80s music and snappy banter we all expect from the Guardians. Looks promising, but then again, it's developed by Square Enix, the people that brought you last year's lackluster Marvel Avengers game. Guardians of the Galaxy launches on October 26th for the PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Another movie property coming into consoles, Avatar dropped a trailer from developer Ubisoft. Titled Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, this game with an all new standalone story has you play as a Na'vi and embark on a journey across the western frontier, a never before seen part of Pandora. Explore a living and reactive world inhabited by unique creatures and new characters, and push back from the formidable RDA forces that threaten it. This will be geared towards the latest consoles as it is available in 2022 for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series XS, PC, Stadia, and Luna. Microsoft came to E3 ready and announced not only an Outer Worlds 2, but showcased their recent acquisition of Bethesda software with a teaser trailer for Starfield, Bethesda's first new unique universe in more than 25 years. In this next generation role-playing game set amongst the stars, you create any character you want and explore with unparalleled freedom as you embark on an epic journey to answer humanity's greatest mystery. Starfield's description was understandably vague, but they're also the makers of Elder Scrolls and Fallout, so it could be amazing. It will launch exclusively on Xbox Series XS and PC on November 11th, 2022. In our comings and goings? Coming, Warner Brothers is all in for Mortal Kombat. First they had the reboot in the spring, and coming this summer, a sequel to 2019's animated Marvel Kombat's Legends, Scorpion's Revenge, titled Marvel Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms. Mortal Kombat started as a video game in 1992 and went on to be one of the most profitable gaming franchises of all time. It's no wonder the people at Warner Brothers want to milk the franchise for all it's worth. No news if this will release like the Mortal Kombat live action version in April, with it appearing on HBO Max and theaters simultaneously. Seems Disney just can't help themselves in using their Disney Plus streaming platform to make fan fiction come to life. The House of Mouse has officially ordered an eight episode musical series that serves as a prequel to their 2017 live action take on Beauty and the Beast. Luke Evans and Josh Gad will reprise their roles of Gaston and LeFou, and will be joined by Brianna Middleton as LeFou's stepsister Tilly. Set years before the Beast and Belle's romance, the series will follow Gaston and LeFou as they set off on an unexpected journey with Tilly after a surprising revelation from her past comes to light. While the mysteries of the past are uncovered and the dangers of the present grow, old friends and new enemies reveal that this familiar kingdom harbors many secrets. It's always interesting when they do prequels of movies with the original actors, because the characters get younger while the actors get older and the gap gets wider. But we'll see how that all pans out when shooting starts in the spring of 2022. And in reboots we never expected or wanted, Perfect Strangers is being updated. The story of two distant cousins, one an uptight American, and the other a long distant cousin, Balki Bartokamus from the island of Mipos, living in an apartment where hijinks ensue. This reboot will follow Perfect Strangers, Deja, played by Black Lady sketch show creator and star Robin Thede, who will also write the show, and Poppy, played by British comedian London Hughes, who unexpectedly discover they are half-sisters when they both inherit a one-bedroom apartment above a trap yoga studio in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. Polar opposites, they must learn how to live and work together. Sounds like hilarity will ensue there as well. And our last coming is sure to irritate someone. An MGM and Braun remake of 1972's blaxploitation horror classic Blackula is coming. The new version will be primarily set in a metropolitan city post-coronavirus pandemic. The story follows an ancient African prince who is cursed by Dracula after he fails to agree to end the slave trade. Blackula is entombed and awakens two centuries later to avenge the death of his ancestors and those responsible for robbing his people of their work, culture, and heritage as they appropriate it for profit. I don't see how that could possibly connect to anything that's going on in the modern times we live in. In the goings, looks like the Lambs have finally stopped screaming for the CBS Clarice, the show about FBI agent and Silence of the Lambs heroine Clarice Starling. CBS was looking for ways to move their show to their Paramount Plus platform since, as a Deadline article stated, 
There is no viable path for Clarice to continue on CBS as the broadcast network already committed to a full slate of series for next season, which means Clarice is effectively canceled. Who can show what when it comes to Hannibal Lecter and Clarice Starling is pretty complicated, because MGM holds the rights to all the characters originating the 1991 film, The Science of the Lambs, including Clarice Starling, her colleague Ardelia Mapp, Deputy Assistant Attorney General Paul Krendel, and the late serial killer Buffalo Bill, and a number of others. All other Hannibal characters, including the cannibal doctor himself, remain with the Dino De Laurentiis company. This confusing division of rights is why Brian Fuller's NBC show Hannibal could never feature Clarice Sterling, and why CB's Clarice has never been able to mention Hannibal Lecter by name. Throw in the new Amazon-MGM merger, plus the international rights, and this becomes a headache for everyone involved. Which is sad to see from such a promising franchise. And it looks like the life in the FBI isn't a long one. Original cast member Megan Boone, who plays FBI agent Liz Keene on The Blacklist, is leaving after eight years. She's had to deal a lot on the show, finding out her father is a sociopath, fake husbands, fake deaths, and her being a fugitive. It's been a long eight years for Liz. She'll make her last appearance as a series regular in the June 23rd finale. And NBC has the Super Bowl this year, which means that not only will they have a 50-50 chance of seeing Tom Brady play, but they're also hoping for a record ad revenue profits as they ask for a record $6 million for a 30-second spot. NBC is also telling potential sponsors they may have to buy an equal amount of ads in its 2022 broadcast of the Beijing Winter Olympics, scheduled to take place between February 4th and February 20th of next year, if they want to guarantee prominent placement during the Super Bowl, which will be February 13th, right in the middle of the Olympics, such as the first slot of a commercial break or in the first quarter of the game. Last year's spot went for $5.5 million and had the smallest audience for the game since 2007 when the Colts beat the Bears in one of the brady -less bowls of the new millennium. Looks like it's time to start up the GoFundMe page for our first Monday Morning Memory Wipe Super Bowl commercial. We'll be right back. To celebrate Put a Ring on It Month on Matinee Heroes, this week's cast off has two new hobbitses, Austin Vashaw and Blake Castleman recasting The Fellowship of the Ring this Tuesday, June 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Last week is come and gone, and tomorrow is just another day, but let us look forward as we optimize the week ahead. <laughs> Today, June 21st, is Bring Your Cat to Work Day, or How to Say Fire Me with an Animal Day. Birthdays include Jurassic World's Chris Pratt and the least interesting royal family member, Prince William. Tuesday, June 22nd, is National Kissing Day. Find that person you love and be sure to plant one on them. Consensually, of course. For artist Don Gummer, that would be today's birthday girl, Meryl Streep. Wednesday, June 23rd, is Tom Hanks' favorite day, Typewriter Day. But be careful, there isn't a liquid paper or a whiteout day to fix your errors. Happy birthday to American Idol Judge Randy Jackson. It's your birthday, dog. Sorry. I'm sorry. Thursday the 24th is midsummer. Due to the Julian calendar, it doesn't matter when the solstice happens, which was on Father's Day the 20th, the 24th is always midsummer. So grab some friends, head to Sweden, and enjoy the bear organ harvesting, flower crowns, and facial mutilation, ending with an all-encompassing bonfire. Birthdays include The Flash's Candace Patton and The Office's and Mindy Project star Mindy Kaling. Friday the 25th is Take Your Dog to Work Day. It's really just to make up for the people who brought their dumb cat in on Monday. Premiering in theaters, finally, is F9. You guessed it, the ninth installment of the Fast and Furious franchise. Which makes perfect sense since the F9 key on your keyboard does essentially nothing. This installment finds Vin Diesel's Dom Toretto living the quiet life off the grid with Letty and his son, but they know that the danger always lurks just over the peaceful horizon. This time, that threat forces Dom to confront the sins of his past to save those he loves most. His crew soon comes together to stop a world-shattering plot by the most skilled assassin and high-performance driver they've ever encountered, Dom's forsaken brother, played by Jim Farney impersonator John Cena. And if you just love seeing driving in all types of weather, Netflix has Liam Neeson using a certain set of driving skills in Ice Road. After a remote diamond mine collapses in far northern Canada, a big rig Ice Road driver must lead an impossible rescue mission over a frozen ocean to save the trapped miners. No idea how this one ends, but if Neeson punched the road into submission, I wouldn't be surprised. It's the last Friday of the month, so many use this time to celebrate office birthdays, so let's celebrate office creator Ricky Gervais and an American office star Angela Kinsey, who share birthdays today. Saturday, June 26th is Tropical Cocktail Day, which is perfect since it's also Bartender Mixologist Day. Get yourself something fruity and a coconut and tip your bartender generously. Birthdays include Parks and Recreation duo Aubrey Plaza and Nick Offerman. And finally, Sunday, June 27th is National Ice Cream Day. Get yourself a Fudgy the Whale or a good old cookie puss from Carvel and enjoy. 
Birthdays include Spider-Man's Tobey Maguire, Harry Potter's Neville Longbottom, Matthew Lewis, and thankfully, it's also National Sunglasses Day, so you can avoid the flares so beloved by birthday boy J.J. Abrams. We'll be right back with the Meme of the Week. Here at the Morning Memory Wipe, we aim to be family friendly, so a bit of a warning, you might want to cover the kids' ears for the meme of the week. Ready? Okay. Earlier this week, for some unknown reason, Variety published an interview with Harley Quinn co-creator and executive producer Justin Halperin, who is historically meme-worthy for his shit my dad says Twitter feed that has caught the internet's attention and imagination. Speaking on the creative freedom that comes when writing villains rather than heroes, Halpern gave the example of a moment in the upcoming third season of the animated series where Batman was originally meant to go down on Catwoman. Unfortunately, the higher-ups of DC were having none of it. They're like, heroes don't do that, said Halpern. So we said, are you saying heroes are just selfish lovers? They were like, no, it's that we sell consumer toys for heroes. It's hard to sell a toy if Batman is also going down on someone. And with that, the internet sprang into action. This is outrageous! When they told us Batman traveled the world becoming a master of all skills, I assume they meant all skills. I believe that Batman is bad at sex, and that's canon. Batman begins, but none of his ladies finish. Why would Batman's whole bottom face be open if he didn't do oral? Ridiculous! And even the Padme Anakin meme had a crossover. Batman doesn't go down. Without a fight, right? Without a fight, right? And let's not forget our out-of-context quotes that prove the point. Looks like Batman not going down on women has been a problem for a while. Don't you ever wish you were down there? I'm down there all I need to be. Yes, but it's just a job to you. I'm talking about going down there and having some fun. And of course, even DC Animation had to chime in. But if I do that, if I allow myself to go down into that place, I'll never come back. But I think this last tweet sums this whole controversy up. I'm just glad Batman's parents aren't alive to see this discussion. That makes Batman, in his proclivities, or lack thereof, the meme of the week. This concludes this week's Memory Wipe. Please subscribe to the show on YouTube, click the bell icon, and get notified when we have a new show every Monday morning. Look for the audio version on the show on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcatchers. Follow us on Twitter at Memory Wipe and Instagram at Morning Memory Wipe. Send your emails to morningmemorywipe at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. As always, if we didn't talk about it, you don't need to remember it.